Hey, it's James here from goodguitarist.com and I want to welcome you to your first guitar lesson. Whether you're brand new or if you're dusting off the old guitar and giving it another try, this lesson is for you. So let's get started. This is an acoustic guitar. This is a normal acoustic guitar. It has three main parts. There's the head, the neck, and the body. The head is where you'll find the tuning pegs, which you use to tune the strings. The neck has the fretboard, which is the part that you press to, you know, play chords and melodies and all that. And then the body is the part that amplifies the sound. And that's where you're going to do the strumming. You know, you strum the strings right here. We'll get more into that in a minute. When it comes to holding your guitar, you want to rest this spot right here, this little curve on your leg. And you can rest it on either leg. I'm right-handed and I put it on my right leg. I pull it into my body and I want it to be upright. It's tempting to look at your fingers and do it that way. We want it to be upright. And we're going to rest our strumming arm on the body of the guitar with the crook of my elbow along this line right here. I need my elbow to be in front of the guitar. If it's behind the guitar, I can't reach the strings. So it needs to be in front and I'm holding the guitar securely with just my bicep. This part of my arm can move freely and my chord hand can move freely. You want to be able to let go of your guitar and it doesn't move. Now, one thing that every guitarist has to do before they play is tune the strings. You can be the best player in the world, but if your guitar is out of tune, it's not going to sound good. The strings go like this. The thickest string is E and then A, D, G, B, E. And each string goes into one of these tuning pegs. E, A, D, G, B, E. It just goes in a little semicircle from thickest all the way to the thinnest string. And a trick for memorizing the strings easily is to use a mnemonic device. Elephants and donkeys grow big ears. I have all this stuff in a free worksheet. I'll put a link down below to my Patreon page. It's available for anybody. You don't have to subscribe to anything. You can just click on the link, download the PDF. It has everything that we're going to talk about today. Anyways, with our string names, we know what we're supposed to tune each string to. And in order to do the tuning, I like to use a clip-on tuner. It clips on to the headstock of your guitar. And if you don't have a clip-on tuner, you can download an app. You just put your phone with the microphone facing the sound hole of your guitar like that. And whether you're using an app or a clip-on tuner, the process is identical. You pluck the thickest string, the tuner hears the string, and then it tells you if it's in tune. If I loosen it, see how the tuner's going lower? And if I tighten it, the tuner goes higher. And we want to do it until it's right in the middle. But a little tip, you always want to be underneath and then come up into the note. And you repeat that process with each string. The next one's supposed to be A. We're a little bit flat, so we just tighten the tuning head. And you can tell whether you're tightening or loosening it by how it feels, or you can just look at the dial and be like, it's going higher, I must be tightening it. That one's in tune. That one's good. We're all good. So we're in tune, and as far as the strumming is concerned, I want you to use a thin pick. 0.5 millimeters is the one that I recommend to all my students. And we just graze the strings gently and quickly enough. You know, if you do it too slow, that's not the right sound. You want it to have it all together. Just be gentle. Don't hold the pick too tight and let it just graze the strings. You know, when we just do that, it doesn't sound like much, right? So let's add the chord shapes to it and, you know, start making music. We need to learn where to press the strings. You'll see right here these metal bars. These are the frets. And you're going to press behind a fret. So this is the first fret right here. I'm going to press behind it in this box right here. You can press anywhere in the box and you'll get your note. Now you may have noticed there that sometimes the note didn't sound clear. You want to press just beside the fret with your fingertip. So let's just do a little test. I want you to play the third fret of the B string. So we count up the strings, E, A, D, G, B, and then we go to the third fret. One, two, three, and we press just beside the fret. That's the third fret of the B string. Now I want you to play the second fret of the low E string. And 
You may have noticed that there's two E strings, you know, this one is E and the thinnest one is E. This one sounds low. The thick one is low and the thin one is the high E string. So we're going to play the low E string at the second fret. One, two. Now to play our first chord shape, we're going to start off by placing our ring finger on the third fret of the B string. So we have the B string, that's the second thinnest. We go one, two, three with our ring finger, using the fingertip, getting it as close as we can to the fret. Third fret of the B string. Then I'm going to put my pinky finger, my small finger, just underneath it on the third fret of the thinnest string, of the high E string. And it kind of budges my ring finger out of the way, you know, so the ring finger can't be right beside the fret. I'd make a little bit of room for my pinky. But get them as close as you can. And now we're going to reach our middle finger to the third fret of the thickest string. And you might have a hard time reaching. That's why I like showing this chord first, because it's going to make us, uh, you know, follow those things I talked to you about, like putting your guitar neck up a little bit more. That might help. Also, lowering your thumb. You know, you don't want your thumb too high and you don't want it too low. I feel like the middle is the best place and you want it to be right behind your fingers. You know, you don't want it off to the side. That'll hurt your wrist. We want it right behind our fingers. Bring your elbow in, sit up straight. Make sure your guitar's not tilted this way. If you tilt it that way, it's impossible to reach that note and to feel good doing it. You know, we want our guitar upright. We want it to feel good. Finally, we're gonna add our index finger to the second fret of the A string. And that is a G chord. And just a reminder, I have all of this written out on that free worksheet on my Patreon page. There's all the pictures and everything you see telling you exactly where to put your fingers. And speaking of your fingers, you might, they might start hurting, you know, fingertip pain happens when you're first starting guitar. And the good news is it goes away in a couple weeks. The other good news is that your fingers will start to harden and it actually gets easier to press the strings. You don't want to push through like wrist pain, arm pain, back pain, any of that stuff. You want to solve those problems, but fingertip pain solves itself if you keep going. Anyways, that's our first chord shape, G. Now we're going to make a C add nine chord and it's a really simple switch. We just take these two fingers, our middle and our index, and we move them down one string each. So now my middle finger is on the A string and my index finger is on the D string. Once again, we give it a strum, nice and gentle, give it a listen. And the chord shapes are really just the first step, you know, knowing where to put your fingers. The real thing is uh, being able to switch between chords comfortably. So we're going to start on G and I want you to silently switch. Just switch to C add nine. Keep it, you know, paying attention to your thumb, your elbow and all that stuff. And then switch back to G and just silently go back and forth. I would do this like 10 times, but for the sake of this video, we're going to move on. And uh, once we've done a little bit of silent switching, we can add a little bit of strumming and a little bit of counting to it. In music, we count to four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Over and over again. You know, there are other ways to count, but 99% of the time we're counting to four and we're keeping a steady beat. We need to infuse that into our chord switching so that we can switch chords on time so we can do it accurately. And it'll go like this. One switch 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 one switch switch back one two three four and i call that the chord switching game you're gonna see there's more phases to it that we're gonna go through but first i want you to try that with me one more time one two three four strum switch 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 strum switch switch back one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I go through that game extensively with like all the basic shapes in a bunch of resources. The best one is my complete beginners course. I'll put a link to that in the corner if you're interested in checking it out. Otherwise, let's move on to the next phase of the chord switching game where we're going to strum on beats one and beat two and then on beats three and four, we're going to switch. So more time strumming, less time switching. And we're keeping the timing going steady the whole time. So it's going to be building up our rhythm too. Let's give it a shot. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
switch, switch. One, two, switch, switch. One, two, switch, switch. One, two, switch, switch. And the cool thing is you can play this game at your own pace. The concept is simple enough. You just got to be able to count out loud and strum along, you know, so I do recommend doing that afterwards. I just want to show you the next phase of the game now where we strum on beats one, two, and three, and then we switch on beat four, two, three, four, one, two, three, switch, one, two, three, switch, one, two, three, switch. switch and finally the final phase we strum all four beats and we switch in the little gap between beat four and the next beat one this is kind of our end goal you know don't worry if you're not here yet you got to go through this whole thing at your own pace all the phases of the chord switching game 10 minutes of practice every day and you'll totally be able to nail this anyways one two three four one two Four switch one two three four switch one two three four switch one two three four switch now with everything that we've learned so far with those chords with that gentle strumming and that counting we can start playing songs right away for the first time ever with just two chords and some simple strumming you'll be able to play your favorites by the Beatles. Always be true. So please love me too. Bruce Springsteen. Born in the USA. I was born in the USA. Lou Reed. Hey babe, take a walk on the wild side. I said, hey babe, take a walk. Cocker. Feeling all right. Uh -huh. Not feeling too good myself. More Beatles. It's a steady job, but he wants to be a paperback writer. Paperback writer. Poison. Every cowboy sings a sad, sad song. Just like a has its thorn. The Beatles again. I've got a feeling, a feeling deep inside. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Billy Ray Cyrus. Don't tell my heart, my achy, breaky heart. I just don't think you'd understand. And if you tell my heart, my achy, breaky heart. Might blow up and kill this man. The moldy beaches. Part time lover and a full time friend. The monkey on your back is the latest trend. I can't see what anyone can see. Anyone else. But. And many, many more. So I hope you enjoyed our first guitar lesson. I have a lot of stuff coming up this January. I'm actually going to do 30 days of guitar. So we're going to do 30 lessons starting at absolute beginner and working our way up a bit further than we went today, you know, quite a lot further. And it's all going to be completely free here on YouTube. So don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to be notified when that's out, hit the bell icon and all that. And if you can't wait and you want a step-by-step -step way to go from absolute beginner to confident strummer, being able to play your favorite songs, you know, bust out your guitar at a party and like pull it off with confidence. I have a complete beginner's course. I'll put a link to that in the corner. And you know, it's gonna teach you all the basic chord shapes, the strumming patterns, play the blues, all this stuff that you need to be able to do on guitar and you know, and feel good doing it. There's a link in the corner for that. Don't forget to grab your free copy of that worksheet. I've put a link down below. Have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.